Alright, so today we are going to set up a Totoro unit out in the rain, the Santa Rita experimental uh, rain. And we have a couple main components. This is our 10 centimeter ring. We're using a 10 centimeter ring because this soil is very sandy and so we expect there to be higher hydraulic conductivity. Um, and the 10 centimeter ring allows us to, to get a more stable measurement than the 5 centimeter ring, which is the alternative, which can often be used in uh, soil with uh, in agricultural soils with, with more soil, or with more structure. So, we have, this is the chamber, and this is kind of where the, where the magic happens. One of the things we want to do when we're setting it up is make sure that the chamber is clean. So I'm kind of removing some of that. And you want to check this black seal around here for, uh, that it's fitting well into the groove and that it is clean so that it can make a good seal with this. Uh, but before we put the chamber on, we're going to put this 10 centimeter ring into the soil. I'm going to put that down on my rag. This is our slam plate. It has a nice ring in the middle of it. That's where we want to hit with our mallet. Nice groove on the bottom. Put that into the groove on our 10 centimeter ring. Here's our mallet. I like to use a hand on the ring so that it doesn't bounce as much and so everything kind of stays um, even as I put pressure on it. And so I'm going to use my hammer and one side going down a lot more than the other, which indicates we probably hit a rock. When you hit a rock, you may create preferential flow pathways, and then we wouldn't be measuring the true hydraulic conductivity. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it out, and I can see that I bent the ring there a little bit, dump the soil out of that, and try a new spot. This soil is pretty hard. It's not always that hard to put it into the ground. Um, but what we have here is a real nice set where the ring is flush with the ground all the way around. We take the slam plate off. Make sure that there's not any loose material that is protruding from the top of the ring that can interfere with the sensors inside of the chamber. I'm gonna take the chamber again. Check, everything looks clean. I'm going to line up my clamps with the hooks on the side. Place that down. These hooks come around here. Um, one thing as you go through, these clamps can change a little bit. There's a screw in there to tighten or loosen them. You want to make sure that there's some resistance, but not too much resistance. You don't want to deform that uh, seal on the inside and you want it to have a strong enough seal that the water is not going to come out. We have three black cords, and these are going to hook up to what we call the uh, both the brains and the circulatory system of our machine. And over here on the side is where all of our tubes hook up. So there's two black tubes. They each have a different size diameter, so you can see pretty easily where they go in. And you just push until you feel it kind of click into place. Push and click again for that one. This is for the electrical sensors. There's a small knob here on the bottom. So you need to make sure that that is lined up in order for everything to fit properly. Like that, and then give that a little twist. Then we have our water tank. set it right here behind the chamber and there is a tube with a joiner that fits on nicely to our water tank right here and again just push until you feel that kind of click and the water tube goes into a circulatory system as well and then we're going to program the machine and when you do this There is, we hit the power button first. It will give you a reading from your last measurement. 
it will save all of the measurements so you can just go to the next one you put enter and that brings you to your setup first thing we want to do is change the name so we go to name up when that is highlighted it deletes it so the last one was 05 this one's going to be centimeters, a high pressure setting of 10 centimeters, a soak time of 20 minutes, we're running it for two cycles, and we have a hold time of 20 minutes. That hold time means it's going to be at the low pressure for 20 minutes, to the high pressure for 20 minutes, and that's one cycle. So when we do two cycles, it goes low pressure, high pressure, low pressure, high pressure. Uh, the soak time starts before the cycle, so um, we will end up with a total, and then we also include the insertion depth centimeters. So um, once you are done with all of your settings, you'll come back to this screen. Uh, it tells you that the runtime is 100 minutes for this, uh, for these settings. And you go down here to start. You want to make sure that your water tub is facing down. You push this lever up so that the water can come out. And then you hit start, hit enter. Um, it says check water supply and tubing and sensors. We check to make sure everything is secure. Everything looks good here. Our water is on. We push enter and we hear it start pumping the water. The water immediately starts to flow through there. And then uh, after about 30 seconds, we see the water coming through this black hose and going into the chamber. It will go through a period of equilibration first. Um, once the water reaches about five centimeters, of, of depth above the soil, it will start its soaking phase. Um, we have it set to soak for 20 minutes. After that 20 minutes of soaking, uh, we're expecting that the area within that 10 centimeter ring is saturated. After that, it goes through the, the two cycles that we have set. At the end of it, the machine records all of the information and uh, turns itself off. These machines can overheat. So when we're in a desert setting, I tend to close the lid that has worked pretty well to avoid the overheating. Um, and we like to come back and check on them occasionally. In the beginning, to check to make sure that there's not leaking or um, that the water is not coming out, we can go through the different menu settings here and we, can, we have a graphical display on this machine that shows us the water level, that the water level is being maintained, that the pressure level is being maintained, and the flux measurements. Um, are all right here on this screen, so you can check to make sure that everything looks good as we go along. Um, once we know that things are going well, the soaking series is done, the cycle comes on, and we see that the flux and the pressure are good, I might come back and check every 30 minutes or so. Um, at the end, there's a nice little USB port right here. You uh, get a program with your Shaturo that allows you to download the data. Download takes about two minutes check to make sure that the data looks good. Again, on your computer, it'll give you all of the raw information about, um, about when you took it and the, the, the time and the date and the settings that you had, as well as the graph for the water, the flux, and the uh, pressure. And it also gives you all of the raw data for the entire 100 minute run. Um, so that's what we're doing with the Saturo data for measuring saturated hydraulic conductivity. Um, it has seemed to work really well so far. We've seen some interesting differences between the, the treatments in accordance with what we would expect for soil health practices. So I'm interested to see more of the data. Um, if you have any questions, uh, this, ma this machine is put together by the Meter Group uh, out of Pullman, Washington. And I'm sure that they